first of all, you are welcome to my television show. Thank you very much for the invitation to be here. What is the purpose of your visit this time here in Nepal? Well, we're really here today to celebrate the success of Nepalese students who have studied in Australia mm -hmm. and then returned to Nepal and are now really actively contributing to the prosperity of the economy here. Mm -hmm. So we're holding a series of alumni awards this evening uh, and we're doing that on the eve of a major education fair where we have a number of Australian institutions who are here in the market to talk to Nepalese students about the opportunities to study in Australia. Okay, talking about this particular award, Australian Embassy um, is organizing this kind of like ceremony every year. Uh, personally, how do you see the um, like success stories of Nepalese people who studied in Australia? Um, how, do you, how do you see the success stories of Nepalese people? Well, at the moment we have about 12,000 uh, Nepalese student visa holders in Australia. Uh -huh. So there's a huge pool of success stories that we're mm -hmm. seeing coming out. Uh, these are both Nepalese students who are returning here to Nepal, um, such as uh, people who are now working in jobs such as uh, in the Center for Molecular Science. Uh, we have people who have just uh, founded uh, new businesses here, such as the Himalayan Java Cafe chain, uh, as well as Nepalese people who are now working internationally. Mm -hmm. They might be in top hotels, having completed a course in hospitality management in Australia, they might be in um, academia working around the world in the US and the UK and top universities, um, or they might be in the business field. Uh, so we do have a very strong track record and one of the things we're looking to do is to produce a small book which uh, highlights some of the success stories that we've seen over the last few years. Mm -hmm. uh, and we want to keep celebrating that and that's why we're doing the awards this evening. Mm -hmm. Actually, um, in our show, you know, we receive hundreds of queries from the especially students who are trying to go to abroad for further career and they always ask um, the question to us that you know how can we achieve success in our life uh, as you are here and we are celebrating um, this excellent award um, how do you define the success that will be a great lesson for our you know yes, Nepalese yeah. viewers well, I, it's really interesting. We did a lot of research on exactly. why do people study internationally. Uh -huh. um, and what we found is that what people are really looking for is an international education that will give them better work prospects, mm -hmm. better opportunities, and a wider range of choices. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's exactly what Australian education offers. And what we also see from parents who are often helping to fund this mm -hmm. uh, education is that they want a good return on their investment. They want to know that by investing in their children's education in Australia or elsewhere, they are actually opening up the job prospects uh, for their children. Mm -hmm. uh, and really the work that we're doing with our Future Unlimited um, uh, exercise in Australia mm -hmm. is really about showing how that can actually happen. Mm -hmm. So Australia is really working to demonstrate that we're a very young, mm -hmm. we're a very vibrant culture and we're very forward looking. So we offer a range of courses in areas that are not just the traditional areas of study, but where mm -hmm. we see the future careers emerging. Mm -hmm. So that might be in areas like engineering and uh, geo-surveying, where people can go into the mining sector. It might be in areas such as um, hotel management uh, and in ecotourism, where we see enormous growth opportunities both here in Nepal and around the world. Mm -hmm. And it might be in areas such as environmental science and in other areas of uh, managing uh, the, the scientific growth in things like marine science as well and in ecosystems, where we know that there's a very strong demand um, in the business community and in the academic community for more graduates. Mm -hmm. So we really focus on trying to highlight future opportunities for students Mm -hmm. and really looking at where their, where their career can progress from their study in Australia. Mm -hmm. um, when we see the statistics of Ministry of Education here in Nepal, um, thousands of people go abroad for further education and they have lots of destinations um, like Australia, um, UK and United States. So, especially talking about Australia, then you were just highlighting Australia has unlimited possibilities. Um, but you know, if we just look at the statistics, if we go back on 2009 and number was you know, high, and if we compare the situation of 2010 and 11, number was quite less. 
and now 2000 on especially in this year number has been increased so how does australia see you know to invite international students in australia well australia is a number three uh, destination for um for nepalese students and we're very keen to keep working to make that a very attractive place for mm -hmm. our nepalese students to come and study um, we did see some fluctuation um, a couple of years ago because we were trying to improve the um, the visa situation for Nepalese students and uh, for other students around the world. Mm -hmm. So we did undertake some reforms within Australia in order to um, get rid of some of the um, less uh, attractive elements of the education sector. Okay. And we've done a lot of reform now to ensure very good quality providers and excellent support for international students who are coming into the market. Mm -hmm. And now what we've seen is a streamlined visa process that's been introduced. Mm -hmm. And already in 2013, we've seen a, a doubling of the numbers of uh, students from Nepal in the higher education area. So I think that's a good sign that the reforms have worked very well uh, and that we're now starting to see the, um, the process becoming much easier and, uh, and more successful for students. And indeed, the grant rates of our visas has increased enormously over the last 12 months, which is very encouraging. So we hope to keep continuing in that vein. I think this is good news for the Nepalese students who want to study in Australia. So do you think that the same trend will continue in the days to come as well for certain years? Well, we've certainly welcomed the interest from Nepal. And for all students who are really interested in pursuing a genuine career by studying internationally, um, and I think there is enormous potential for us to grow the business further. Uh, and there are some very good um, uh, sources of information from our study in Australia website, mm -hmm. uh, also through some of our um, LinkedIn um, sites, lots of testimonials and case studies to show students how to do it. And of course, there are a range of education agents here in the market who can provide some good, credible information on how to go about studying effectively here. And many of our universities come to the fairs, like the ones that are on in the next day or so, in order to be able to talk directly to students. And I think that is really where you can get the greatest benefit, is by talking directly to some of the institutions and finding out what sort of course will best suit your interests and needs. And the more that we can help to facilitate some of that contact, the better. Thousands of students are going to Australia, but you know, uh, we have a few success stories, you know, but if we see the, you know, large numbers, you know, not all these students are, you know, successful in their life, you know, and we have heard that, you know, most of these students want to stay there in Australia instead of coming back to Nepal. We have heard that kind of news as well. Um, so, uh, do you think that scenario also, you know, happening in Australia, who are going to Australia from Nepal? Well, I think many of the Nepalese students are quite quiet achievers, so they may not always be on the front page of uh, the newspapers shouting about their successes. Exactly. But I think there are some very good examples of success yes. stories. Yes. And I think for many Nepali students, perhaps they do want to have some international work experience. And for students who do complete a full degree in Australia, they are able to stay on and work for a number of years. So they get some international experience. Mm -hmm. So the post-study work visa is something that they are able to look at. Mm -hmm. And many of them may then go on to work in other parts of the world. Maybe they go to the Middle East or they go to other parts of Asia exactly. uh, in order to get further work experience before returning home. So I think, you know, you will always see a good mix of, uh, of experiences. And um, what's important, I think, is that they get an excellent foundation through their international education that really opens up those opportunities. So they do have choice that they can say, do I want to come home and contribute to the economy here in Nepal straight away? Would I like to perhaps work internationally in another location? Or would I like to stay in Australia and work for a couple of years to get some experience that builds on my degree? Mm -hmm. So that's really why we call it Future Unlimited. For those who do come and do do um, a degree in Australia, we think the opportunities are enormous and it's something that we really want to encourage students and their parents to think about. Okay, we have series of discussion about quality education here in Nepal as well. And uh, if we just compare the situation of uh, a few years back, then the, you know um, uh, we have lots of you know institutions who are providing quality education here in Nepal as well. You know, does Australian government have any kind of program you know which will assist you know to develop uh, the like education sector here in Nepal? 
Well, not so much from the education, um, uh, from the government sector, but we do see a number of institutes who are starting to look at being able to deliver courses here okay. in the marketplace, yeah. particularly in areas such as hotel management okay. and uh, retail training and so on, which would very much equip the Nepalese uh, population to be able to deal with the strong growth in the tourism mm -hmm. market mm -hmm. here in Nepal as well as be well prepared to look for international work opportunities in other markets, whether it be in India or the Middle East or, or other neighboring countries. Mm -hmm. So it's something that we started to see in India, and we have some successful models okay. that have started in India, also in Sri Lanka, and even in uh, Pakistan. So we okay, think there great. is the potential to be able to look at how some of those models are working and how we can bring them into Nepal as well. Okay. Uh, and to see that as a real partnership that delivers a win-win for both the Nepalese uh, community here in terms of being able to provide the businesses here with well-skilled people that are suited to the needs of uh, the growing industries as well as um, enabling Australian players to come into the market and That's partner great. successfully. Do you want to share any message to our viewers? And you want to especially highlight mm -hmm. any, you know, which is left to discuss here? Well, I think there is already very strong ties between Nepal and Australia. And I think as people, we get on very well together and have a very good mutual understanding. We have a population of about 26,000 Nepalese people in Australia. Mm -hmm. And they obviously provide an excellent support network for students who are going over to study. Mm -hmm. And it means that a lot, there's a lot of cultural activity which, me, which allows people to feel at home and comfortable when they go over to study in Australia. Mm -hmm. um, and we also believe that through the non-resident Nepalese associations, which yes. are strong in Australia, and indeed the uh, global president at the moment is, a, is an Australian, Shesh Gale. Yes, so, Shesh Gale. Yes. Yeah, He's so also in education sector. Yeah. <laughs> so we're very proud of those connections, and we would really like to find new ways to build on them for trade, investment, and for our education work. Thank you so much for your valuable time and information to our viewers. Thank you very much again for the invitation. It's been a pleasure to be here.